Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we're going to try and answer a viewer's question. Um, it occurred a few videos back now, can't remember exactly when, but somebody asked the question if somebody could try and explain in simple terms exactly what a sideband is. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Now if you're a radio amateur, sidebands are a very familiar concept to you, but I guess outside the, the world of radio they're perhaps um, uh, maybe less obvious. So hopefully my explanations are going to make some sense and uh, we'll hopefully clear a few things up. So let's start with a little bit of theory. Okay, just a little bit of theory then. So sideband um, is the result of a property of, of combining two frequencies, I guess in essence. Um, when two waveforms are mixed the output will include the fundamentals plus waveforms that are equal to the sum and the difference of those fundamentals. Now that's a bit of a, a mouthful. So if we do that algebraically, I guess it's C plus M, where C is a carrier and M is the modulation frequency. We're going to get the fundamental C, the carrier. We're still going to have the modulated frequency M. We're also going to get C plus M and C minus M. So numerically, if we have a uh, a thousand uh, hertz and we mix 10 hertz with it we're going to get a thousand we're going to get 10 but we're also going to get a thousand and ten and 990 so the the sum and the difference if you like the two at the end probably easier to show that graphically it'll make much more sense so there's the fundamental at a thousand and the modulating frequency at 10 uh, not particularly to scale and if we mix them together we still get the modulating frequency and the and the fundamental, but we also get um, the minus and the plus, which I've shown there as the two brown bars. And if you just isolate that bit around the thousand, that looks suspiciously like um, uh, a signal that you might recognise from a perhaps an AM transmission on a on a waterfall display. So that's uh, a bit of clever theory. Let's now actually look at what it looks like in practice. OK, let's look at mixing two frequencies in the real world. Um, so here I've got the spectrum analyzer. It's now attached to my signal generator. And my signal generator is capable of um, mixing two frequencies together and outputting them. So I've chosen one megahertz as if you like the the carrier frequency if you like if it was radio and the frequency I'm going to mix with it is one kilohertz so we should get um, two side bands one at minus one kilohertz and one at plus one kilohertz and on here because I've got a, a span of four kilohertz one kilohertz will be two and a half divisions either side of the fundamental so let's turn modulation on and hopefully my theory will be proved correct Whew, thank goodness it is. So you've got lower sideband, usually called the lower frequency, upper sideband, usually referred to as the one above the, the carrier frequency. And as you can see, the two mixed frequencies are less than the, the fundamental, which is still sitting there at one megahertz. So that's um, sideband generated in the lab, so to speak and fits in with the theory. Let's have a look now at where we would normally encounter sideband. OK, let's have a look at uh, how things actually appear uh, in the real world. So I've got the spectrum analyzer attached to my HF antenna and I've found a strong uh, shortwave AM broadcast station on 13.635 megahertz. And I've chosen this one because it's essentially speech. There isn't any music at the moment. And I want to compare it with speech on sideband. So I thought that was that was a little better. So here you can see very strong fundamental carrier here on 13.635. And you can see some kind of activity around it. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see like that. So if we add an additional trace now, um, a blue one and we ask that additional trace to uh, do maximum hold you'll still see the yellow trace but you'll slowly start to see the blue trace building up and hopefully as the speech progresses the program was in a foreign language but there was 
a number of different voices were talking so I guess it's some kind of uh, talk show you can hopefully see um, a characteristic shape starting to build up with um, roughly uh, mirror image waveforms on either side of the carrier now it's maybe not exact but uh, bearing in mind this is probably coming um, from several thousand miles away um, probably on another continent so uh, it's probably a little bit distorted but if I now uh, just turn off the constantly updating display and just leave the max hold on you can start to see now there's clearly some symmetry developing and I've got a span here of 20 kilohertz so that is 10 kilohertz between the center and the edge so you can see that the transmissions occupying just over 10 kilohertz that's about five and you can hopefully now start to see very strong fundamental a the carrier and then you've got the lower side band and the upper side band slowly being built up as the um, speech peaks continue and I don't suppose it's too difficult to to imagine somebody looking at that and thinking well hang on if that is a mirror image of that we don't need to transmit one of them we could just get away with transmitting just one and well, what do we need the carrier for because it isn't doing anything except setting the frequency and since whether it was there or not that sideband would still exist there we'd have the frequency so we could waste less spectrum and probably equally important certainly for portable transmitters we're putting less energy um, into transmitting the signal because we don't need to amplify that and we don't need to amplify that we can just amplify the the needed bit so hopefully you can see very clearly there and if I now put the um, speech peak trace back on you can hopefully see it's um, ticking away there in a very a very similar kind of way I just put a max hold onto the yellow trace so you can see the kind of thing I mean but we're definitely getting a, a, a symmetry building up either side of the character so you've got the lower side band and the upper side band so the main frequency and then main frequency minus the modulation and main frequency plus the modulation so that's an AM transmission in the shortwave band okay here we are then uh, with span settings exactly the same as before except now I've got the uh, analyzer centered on 5.505 megahertz which is the um, automated weather transmission uh, from Shannon in Ireland and that's transmitted on upper sideband uh, actually 24-7 and it's an automated system but it is a female voice that has has recorded the automated sounds that the computer puts together to transmit so hopefully we've got a similar kind of thing going on so what we're looking at now then is single sideband and there's some important characteristics to note here so let's now put on a second trace I'm going to put a green trace on um, so there's a green trace and I'm going to make that to max hold and We'll let it just build up there but you can hopefully see pretty clearly that it's a very different shape to the AM so if I turn off the yellow trace just so it's easier to see we're still updating the max hole so we've got a uh, center frequency 5505 and we've clearly got the upper side band but we've got nothing on the lower side band and no carrier because the carrier would be there and you as we know human voice um, essentially I guess goes from about I don't know 300 Hertz up to um, maybe a few kilohertz at the very most but again we've got exactly the same span so we've got 10 kilohertz there so this transmission probably doesn't even occupy four kilohertz so we're not having to uh, amplify and transmit uh, unnecessary lower sideband and the unnecessary carrier 
so that is just the sideband and you can see why single sideband became um, so popular as a as a means of transmitting voice and it is still going there it's just that the um, update is uh, pretty much complete now so that's uh, a single sideband transmission okay we've looked at what happens when we mix frequencies together uh, we've looked at the theory and we've tried to translate that into practice which hopefully we did manage to do and then we've looked at some real world examples of amplitude modulation and single sideband which is a, a derivative of amplitude modulation I guess so I hope that's clarified things for the original asker of the question and they now have a little bit better idea of exactly what a sideband is um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please click the thumbs up um, it would be great if you could subscribe uh, and also click the like doing either or both of those things helps the channel and I appreciate that if you're in the market for a multimeter of some description uh, you'll find some some codes in the description for the um, Kiwitz multimeters and you get a discount and if you use that link it also helps the channel a little bit to those of you that have already done that thank you very much that's really appreciated and if you're thinking of doing it that'd be great too see you on the next video